FM Broadcasting Systems. So in this lecture, we'd like to go over two important concepts, the concept of emphasis, we'll look at pre-emphasis and de-emphasis, and then we'll look at the difference between stereo versus mono FM. We'll look at the spectrum, how to design a transmitter that's stereo, and then we'll look at the receiver. So basically, we'll start with the concept of pre-emphasis and de-emphasis. If you look at the diagram here below, you find out that we start with the message. The message goes to the FM transmitter. Through the, the channel, noise get added. Now, at the receiver side, we will get the message plus noise. The first thing we notice is that the message or the output of the FM receiver, we have noise impacting higher frequency components worse than lower frequency components. So the effect of noise in the high frequency side is worse than the effect on the low frequency side. So how do we deal with this? How do we solve this problem? How do we solve this problem? We use the concept of pre-emphasis, de-emphasis. What we're going to do is apply a pre-emphasis. What's pre-emphasis? It is pre-emphasis refers to posting uh, of the relative amplitudes of, of, the, of the modulated voltage for high audio signals. Approximately voice or audio signals that are 2 kilohertz and higher will be amplified. So if you look at the transfer function of the pre-emphasis filter here, you find out that frequencies that are below 2 get constant amplitude, they remain the same, and the frequencies that are above 2 kilohertz get emphasized they get posted, they get stronger signal. Why? Because we say just that the noise will affect this part worse, so we want to get some boost. Now, at the receiver side, okay, so this, the, the location of the pre-emphasis showing, is showing here in the diagram. So we do pre-emphasis of the message before we do the FM transmitter. Of course, if we use uh, non-constant amplitude, we're going to deteriorate the message. The message will be distorted. So to avoid this, we'll do the opposite at the receiver side. The receiver process is called the de-emphasis. De-emphasis means attenuation, the opposite of boosting, of the frequencies that were already boosted. So the transfer function looks like this. Okay. So now we're de-emphasizing these frequencies. And the net result would be, the location of the filter would be here. So we have pre-emphasis, and this is called de-emphasis. The net result of the two filters is nothing. So what do we gain if we have done nothing? The, in fact, the message will not be affected because it was pre-emphasized, de-emphasized. So this combined frequency response is just for the message. However, for the noise, notice the noise get added here. So the noise will not be emphasized, but rather it's going to be de-emphasized. So the gain is now that we have mitigated this effect, we have de-emphasized the noise. And notes because we are dealing with, with audio signals, this is to be done for frequencies almost above 2 kilohertz, up to the maximum or almost maximum audible frequency, which is around 15 kilohertz. Now, this is the concept of pre-emphasis and de-emphasis. Next, we look at the concept of mono versus stereo uh, phonic. We notice first that we have two ears, and, and this is not duplication. If a sound is localized, sound comes from somewhere, uh, the time it takes to arrive to the first ear is different than the other. The amplitude, the magnitude will be different. This difference between what we get between the left and right uh, gives us the spatial feeling. It allows us to know where does the sound come from? Does it arrive to the left first, then the right, or vice versa? So we can tell where the sound is coming from. Also, the details of the creation of the ears allow us to help because it creates directional uh, sensor, directional uh, audio ability. With that in mind, we can design an audio or mono speaker system, a mono system, where we use only, if there is a sound, we use only one microphone. One microphone gives you one signal. Even if we have two speakers, we'll be feeding the same signal to the two. 
in that case we lost we lost the spatial effect so in mono speakers they only have one channel of audio as an input uh, the combined left and right will be uh, set together and we hear it as just one signal and this is usually is good enough for just intelligible sound where we just want to know what is being said however in applications like multimedia applications where we need to know uh, more about the quality of sound and where does it come from then we need dual channels at least two channels uh, and this includes right usually right and left this is called stereo uh, speakers or speak stereo system where we have right channel and left channel so to get an a stereo a stereophonic system we start by having two microphones so if i put if this is the sort of sound i will be recording the sound by at least two um, microphones you can see that if you're going to send two signals the requirement on the system will be doubled now we can extend this idea if you want to have feeling of location the new system the home theater system and other systems will be using uh, multiple speakers and in the scene where the movie is being recorded or what, whatever action is being recorded we'll have multiple microphones and we have different signals uh, from different locations we'll have one microphone here one microphone there so if, if the car is passing by we know the sound come into this speaker first and then in the second speaker and the third speaker and so on okay so sometimes you call the system 5.1 speaker which means we have five speakers and we have a subwoofer a subwoofer is basically a low frequency amplifier which is usually up to uh, amplify signals up to 120 hertz because all, also these frequencies below that uh, uh, frequency get attenuated dramatically so the subwoofer will make up for that it's not usually called a speaker so it's not six speakers because it, it does not cover all the bandwidth okay so usually a low frequency we are not sensitive to the location of low frequency so you can put the subwoofer anywhere and this uh, five speakers has to be located in the right position to recover the, the original um, recording uh, and some speakers like here you notice that uh, we, we have multiple speakers like uh, big ones for low frequency small ones for high frequency remember that c equal to lambda f which means the wavelength is inversely proportional to the frequency usually the higher frequency the lower the required size you can of course think of other applications but this uh, 5.1 is the popular home theater system now we go into some technical stuff let's see how this circuit work how do we design a system that stereo that send left and right channel at the same time it's compatible with the with the original systems which are mono let's see how things work we start from the left here we have the left channel and the right channel we have two audio channels in the upper branch you can see the summation here we are going to add the two signals so we got here left plus plus right while on the lower branch we got the difference left minus right remember there is a minus sign here we're just manipulating the sound or the audio signals now this block is the familiar block which is the pre-emphasizer so we have the pre-emphasizer in the lower and the upper branch and the resultant signal will be the left plus right and then we are saying dash or prime to represent that this is being emphasized similarly in the lower branch we have the difference now all we have done is add subtract and we have emphasized the signal okay now before going to the fm modulator shown here at the output before going to this fm modulator we have three branches going to this fm modulator so the upper branch goes as is the left plus right part of the signal it's being pre-emphasized it's not affected it's not shifted well in the lower branch what we do we shift the signal by double sideband subdisk carry modulator this is just multiplying by cosine with proper filtering so we're going the lower branch will be shifted and the upper branch is not shifted okay how much is the shift there is a pilot here this pilot is going to be added so we have left plus right right left minus right shifted and then we have a cosine carrier a carrier 
This is the same carrier used here, but with a frequency doubler. The frequency doubler will double the frequency. So stereophonic has to be compatible with, mo with monophonic reception. The left plus right should be received by the monophonic. The total bandwidth should not be affected dramatically. It should be around 200 kilohertz. Now, if you look at uh, the pilot, the standard pilot selected here is going to be 19 kilohertz, and we will see why. So 19 kilohertz through the frequency doubler, the frequency here becomes 38. 19 times 2, we got 38 kilohertz. This is what we need to shift the, the lower signal. Now, if you look at the resultant signal here before being modulated, we have left plus right, left minus right, pre-emphasized and shifted by cosine with 38k, plus a small pilot. This alpha represents a small value. So we are sending the carrier to ease the reception. The spectrum of, of the combined signal will look like this. This is a single-sided spectrum. Uh, we have up to 15 kilohertz of left plus right pre-emphasized. We have the pilot at 19. And then we have a double sideband suppressed carrier signal, which is the left minus right shifted to 38. Now, we left some gap here. There is a gap here between 15 and 23 uh, to allow the receiver to use a, a narrow filter to recover the carrier and use it to continue the demodulation. Now, what if we make this value instead of 19, we make it like 25. If we make it 25, this is going to be shifted to 250 and we'll have lots of wasted space here. What if this smaller than, uh, for example, th smaller than 15? If it's smaller than 15 with a frequency doubler, these two are going to overlap. So the choice of 19 is to make sure that there, there is enough bandwidth here to recover the signal, not too much to waste and not too little so we get confused with the original signal. Okay, if your, sig if your system is just uh, monophonic, the receiver can just pick this part of the signal and listen to the two. If your system is stereophonic, we'll get left plus right, left minus right, and we have to play with them to recover the individual audio signals or channels as we're going to see next. So some additional notes. Let's summarize some of our notes. Monophonic FM consists of the upper branch only left plus right which is compatible uh, signal without stereophonic. I mean, a monophonic will just receive the sum. Why 19 kilohertz? Because there is no signal component within the 4 kilohertz that we have shown in the spectrum. What is the effect of adding a pilot? It will reduce the signal to noise ratio because not all the signal is going to, not all the power will be put in, in, in the signal. We have to put some power in the, in the pilot. Uh, if the maximum, just to give you an idea, if the maximum of the right audio signal and the left is AP, then of course we can assume that the worst case maximum of, of both, they're going to be double that, assuming they're totally different. Okay, so this is the maximum possible value for the amplitude of the joint channel. And of course we get, we, it's going to, we will have some additional violet alpha. The amplitude will be, uh, we will reduce the amplitude to avoid the peak. Uh, up to about 90%, and hence the power will be reduced up to 81%. Remember, the, the power is related to the amplitude squared. So going if the amplitude goes down up to 90%, 9 squared is 81%, and of course, 0.81 in dB scale is equivalent to 1 dB. So we lost 1 dB of power in the pilot instead of putting it in the message. Okay. Now, uh, as a good exercise, we would like, given the transmitter, given the joint message, how do we construct the receiver? By the way, we should be able to sketch the FM stereophonic receiver and the FM stereophonic transmitter. So what you see here is that it is the transmitter and the title says the receiver because we need to build the receiver. Now, if you look at the spectrum, you can easily design the system. A low pass filter will recover the list plus right. A band pass filter will recover this, but it needs to be demodulated. We can get the carrier off with, with the filter. So we basically start with three branches, as you can see here. 
okay usually we st uh, will start with the limiter discriminator and this is of course um, because the, we have an fm signal here okay and we want just uh, to get the message so here we need the combined message at this stage so what you see in the spectrum is not uh, of course um, the fm signal but rather the the combined message so this is why um, we need a limiter discriminator to get the fm message into the combined baseband spectrum and now we get a low pass filter the low pass filter the upper branch let's use color here so the green branch here will the low pass filter will operate here so we get the signal okay um, the other filter here uh, the narrow band filter with around 19 kilohertz will get the signal here okay and then of course we use frequency doubler to make it 38 okay this 38k will be used to demodulate this part so we can use here uh, a different color so this is another band bus filter that picks the signal from 23 to 35 and then we need the demodulator here uh, we need the demodulator to bring the signal back to the baseband so what we get here is left plus right emphasized and here we have left minus right uh, minus left minus right uh, pre-emphasized after the de-emphasizer this this prime is going to go away so we have left plus right left plus right if you add them together you get the left in fact you get two left but you know as we mentioned earlier just amplitude scaling should not be a big problem for the lower branch you're going to subtract them from each other okay so we can get um, uh, two times r so now we have separated the left from the right if the same signal was fed to a monophonics receiver he's going just to look or it's going just to get uh, the combined signal so there is no space effect there is no stereophonic effect so to test your understanding you need to take a pen and paper and sketch these two uh, by heart if you can do that it means you really understand what's going on or given the transmitter you need to design the receiver or vice versa now there is a nice video i'd like to share with you if um, you can find the video on, on youtube it's called uh, the virtual barbershop haircut it's very interesting if you wear a headphone and listen to this um, video it's an amazing effect where it shows you the impact of spatial you will feel that your hair uh, is being cut so i advise you to visit the following link or, or uh, if you search for virtual barbershop haircut 3d sound effects in youtube you'll find uh, a couple of them now to conclude just to show you how amazing is technology um, this is not part of the book textbook we're just sharing with you that and as part of the new technology some people developed uh, what they call visual microphone they use the camera with a very high resolution to capture the sound on the vibration on objects so imagine that there is a tree or plan or let's say um, plastic bag and somebody is speaking here we have a soundproof uh, uh, windows and we, all we have is, a, is a, a camera this camera can capture the variation because of the very high resolution can capture the variation on the plastic bag that reflects the sound uh, the, as a result of the sound of people speaking inside and with signal processing uh, people show that they can recover the sound so if you speak inside a room this doesn't mean that uh, people cannot recover your sound especially if they have a very very high resolution camera you can read more about this in the following uh, link or just uh, search for visual microphone okay i hope you enjoyed it